1450. I want to go right to the phone lines and talk to Coach DeCosti here. Colgate, let's go to the lines. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic this morning. Happy New Year's to you. You as well. So, Coach, I, I lo- nobody likes talking Patriot League football. I don't think more than I do. We talk a lot about it here on uh, Sunday mornings. used to be Saturday mornings. And uh, first, congratulations. Um, you guys finished the season 5-1 and one in the Patriot League. And, Coach, don't go hard on me, but you beat my alma mater. And at the last game of the season, you beat Fordham um, at the end of the year. But talk to us about the ups and downs of the season. Well, I, um, you, you hit it on the head there with the ups and downs. It was, it was, it was a roller coaster in a lot of ways, um, going all the way back to, to the summer and um, just trying to right the ship a little bit with a lot of transitioning going on in the program. And then uh, um, we never uh, we never schedule any cupcakes here, so we always know we're going to start off with some tough yep. games. So, um, you know, going 0-3 to start and then hosting Lehigh, uh, which has a lot of historical uh uh, importance to our program between the two, a lot of great, a lot of great uh, matchups over the years. So um, that was a great one to get at home and uh, get that first W, and then you know got one out then at Georgetown um, with uh, with our quarterback going down, and we got some young kids that came in and, and threw some big balls, and, and uh, you know got out of there with the win. To be honest with you, I was probably more excited after that one just because we really gutted it out, and um, we won a close one at the end, and then. Then we hit some. Uh, we we had three uh, three bad losses, you know, and uh, you know there's never no such thing as a good loss, but um, but we lost three three games in a row, three different ways, and um, you know the Brown and Cornell, and then Holy Cross, they had a great year this year, and uh, um, you know they beat us, so so we basically, you know, we talked to the team shortly after that Holy Cross loss on Monday morning, got them up at 6 a.m., got them in the weight room, and I just said, listen, we got a three game season. Uh, to get this program trajectory back in the right direction and uh, for your senior to leave a, a legacy of, of uh, stabilizing this program and building momentum. And, and so we just started going with a, a more of a one and zero mentality, which I know a lot of programs do that, but that was that's all we had with our backs against the wall. So um, the guys fought. They fought all year. I mean, they never, there was never a practice where there was an attitude issue or effort issue. It was just a matter of getting the right pieces together and, and, and getting it done on Saturday. So... Um, the guys, they fought for each other. They fought for the program. And, uh, and finishing off the win over four of them, that was huge. That was, uh, that was a huge deal. Yeah, and, Coach, you you played in the Patriot League, so you understand the league better than better than anybody. And uh, I, I did as well. And one of the things I'd always say about Colgate, even when I was being recruited by Colgate back in the, back in the day, was, you know, when you look at the non-conference schedule, I mean, this year you guys opened up at Boston College, um, Stony Brook, William and Mary, and then even next year you guys will play down at Stanford. But Colgate's never been shy to uh, to go out and schedule, you know, these tough games. And I think it was a couple years ago I had said on the air, I said there's a good chance that Colgate may start 0-6, 0-5 because of the non-conference schedule. But I think that non-conference schedule really helps you guys when you get into the Patriot League. So talk if you can about that tough non-conference schedule over the years. Yeah, and that's something that we've always done. I mean, going back to the, you know, we have alums that played here in the 70s and 80s that, that hang their hat on, on you know, just beating Rutgers or playing the big-time games against Penn State and stuff like that. So, um, you know, so that's something that, you know, we're a small, small liberal arts college in Central New York, but, but uh, you know, we don't apologize for, uh, you know, for having a great football tradition. So that's just, in a lot of ways, obviously, it's got to carry on with us winning championships, but... But outside of that's who we play um, early on without a conference, like you said, and that's something that, you know, getting the power fives like Boston College this year, we got Stanford next year. We actually go coast to coast. We go Stanford, then we go Maine in week two. Right. And uh, and uh, so it's, uh, yeah, we, we honestly, it, it all, it's a year-to-year thing because if you got an, an experienced team, a talented team coming back, then they go into those games with the knowledge on how to beat those that caliber of of team or with the confidence that it could beat that caliber of team. If you got an experienced team trying to find its way, then you're really, you know, you're, you're learning on the run in a lot of ways and you're palacing yourself over and, and getting some toughness and battling through some things that will, at the end of the day, help, you know, when you win the league and go into the playoffs. You know, and we had, if you look at 2018 and 2019 as a perfect example of 2018, we were experienced and talented as we've ever been and, you know, we played. We played some good non-conference teams, CA teams, and we beat them all, and, and uh, the kids didn't blink. You know, fast forward, we graduate 25 seniors, then we open up a Villanova and Maine and Air Force, and, uh, you know, as a, with a team trying to find its rhythm, those are tough games. And uh, so 
Uh, but at the end of the year, it always it always pays dividends. So um, there will be special years when you can get to 9, 10, 11 wins. That, that happens. But sometimes if you had a conference, you could you could have a great a great Patriot League team coming from Colgate with a 7-win season or 8-win season and, and still able to make a run in the playoffs. And, Coach, what's it like for you? You played on a Patriot League championship team, and you were part of the 15-1 and one team that went all the way to the national championship. And, um, you know, you guys had the, the Coach Biddle day, who I have nothing but respect, you know, for Coach Biddle. Because when I was in school, I mean, I graduated in 02 from Fordham, and it was always Colgate, Colgate, Colgate. Every year we had one game circle, and it was we know we had to beat Colgate. But what was it like for you, not only as a player, to now being the head coach at Colgate? Yeah, I mean the coach, uh, and, and this year, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of emotion, a lot of intense emotion throughout the season because a lot of it because it happened fast and you kind of got, um, you got this opportunity as a, as a position that I've always, um, you know, obviously tried to work towards and, and uh, been able to coach under Coach Biddle and, and, and Coach Hunt. Coach Hunt's one of my closest friends. Yep. He's one of the best to ever do it here, and uh, um, I talk to him all the time. But with with Coach Biddle, um, you know, he sat in my living room when I was a high school kid, and, and uh, when I was getting recruited, it was the late '90s Colgate, which, like you said, they were the hot, yeah. they were that hot team, and uh, you know, collecting a lot of talent. So, um, but Coach always did it his his own way. You know, he didn't care about what anyone else thought or said. Um, he wasn't a big rah rah guy. He just kind of oozed that toughness and that that blue collar mentality and us against the world, and, and the guys fed off of it. And I think, you know, being able to honor him this year was was pretty special. I mean, there was. You know, one day I would say out of the whole year where, um, you know, it was kind of like a realization of where I'm sitting right now is after I talked to the team um, before the Bucknell game was our Biddle day, and then we, we talked to the team after breakfast and kind of gave them that pregame speech, and then and I walked down the hill to the stadium on the way. I'm thinking I'm going to go speak at the Biddle dedication ceremony as the head coach, and that was a pretty powerful thing, and that was a lot of intense emotions when I when I was speaking at that deal because I got. You know, such such a respect and and uh, put Coach Biddle up on such a high, you know, on high, yeah, stand, high pedestal and and uh, so so you know to to be in this position, you know, no one has more respect for this position or more pride in being in this position and and uh, now as I told I tell recruits now it's it's that uh, now I just want to beat those guys and uh, you know I want to and Coach Biddle wouldn't want it any other way and Coach Hunt wouldn't want it any other way you know so now it's a now it's a it's, a, it's an awesome challenge to try to match them to beat those guys. And, Coach, I've, I've always talked, I talked with Coach on a lot about recruiting because I know the type of athlete that, you know, they are in a Patriot League. And I always say for people that don't follow the FCS, I do a um, FCS show for FCS Radio Nation where I highlight a lot of the Patriot League games. And um, I always say it's it's one of the best leagues in, in the FCS. But talk to us a little bit about um, the recruiting piece because it's, it's, it's awfully tough to recruit a special kid to play in the Patriot League. Yeah, for sure, and you know, and your coverage is awesome. I think that's that's uh, you know, obviously the the CAA and some other conferences get a lot of notoriety and respect, and, and deservingly so. But I think the kind of the kind of programs we have and the kind of student athletes we get in this league is, is second to none. So to try to, to try to land kids to Colgate or any school in our league, it's really threading the needle because you got to balance between obtainable recruits. Um, that uh, you know that are getting recruited by other high-level schools academically or football-wise, um, you, you got to have a, a good good bulk of them. Then you, obviously they got to match the academic requirements, um, you know. And then you also have to have a, a situation where where you could you could develop depth as well, you know, with with not a lot of scholarships. So really to thread the needle to find a kid like for us specifically, like we feel like we got a Colgate kid in the sense of. You know, we don't apologize for, for who we are, how we play, where we're located, the weather, the size of the school, the size of the town. Like, yep. we're upfront about that. We don't apologize for that. So, you know, in a lot of ways, we, we kind of, you know, sift through the, the, the pool of kids and, and try to find those kids that, that relate to our culture and that fit into our, into our culture here. But I think it's the – when we look at it this way, as we want kids that we could play nationally. You know, we've played nationally. We've, we've won nationally. Um, and we want to get that caliber of talent. But also, we want to get those kids that that have that chip on the shoulder, you know, that that could have played at a higher level, that maybe only had Division II offers, but we saw something in them that that we felt they could play at our level in our culture, and then they develop into all league kids. You know, we get those kids that have a drive inside of them to prove a lot, and you mix those with kids that that have that that special talent coming in to play nationally. That's that's kind of the perfect coach in our mind to, to to be successful here. Well, coach, not that you guys needed motivation, but I picked you guys as a surprise team 
um, coming into this year, I said, there's no way you're going to tell me a Colgate team is going to be picked in the bottom half uh, of the Patriot League, and I'm, I'm sure you had to use some of that for motivation. I knew better. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. When, when I saw that, or someone texted me when it came out, I was driving somewhere, and uh, and uh, I got out and I looked at my phone, and, and they saw, like, one screenshot of me, the rankings, and I kind of, I didn't, I was, I didn't laugh in a way of, like, a mocking way. I was laughing, like, oh, this is perfect. You know, like this is uh, for everything going on in the program right now. And trying to, you know, you know, we we had enough motivation to do things, but this is another thing. Okay, this is what people people think of you guys. You know, someone wrote down Colgate and someone wrote down the number seven next to it. And and uh, you know, so that we talked about it the first day of fall camp, and that was really it until until that week leading up to Fordham when it was kind of, you know, we had a chance to, to finish second and finish five and one in conference. And um, you know, and that's something we have. We have a few Patriot League championship trophies with, with teams that finished five and one in the conference, and uh, you know, so to put that from a from a league standpoint, to put that group of guys, um, you know, it was with the legacy of well, you know, our backs against the wall, and and uh, in a lot of ways going into the season, then midway through the season, but they're able to fight and and, uh, and pull out a five and one league record was a was a pretty special thing. So I don't, you know, we we only worry about the rankings in November. I know that's that's kind of the coach lingo, and yeah. that's really. Now, I couldn't tell you the last time I would have been picked last. I assume it was Coach Biddle's first year because they're coming off an old first season. But um, but that was something where it was like, you know what? Outside looking in, I could see why why people did that, you know. And uh, um, but at the same time, we knew what we had in our locker room. You know, we knew the guys that are going to be developing, and and uh, we were pretty confident that if we just you know go out and play Colgate football, we'll be all right. Well, Coach, I uh, I love talking Colgate football. Uh, I love talking Patriot League, and uh, I'm I'm happy that you guys ended the way you did. I look forward to uh, talking more Colgate football with you during the year and throughout the year. And uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on. And happy New Year's to you. And uh, you're welcome anytime. I appreciate it. I appreciate your coverage of the league, and uh, um, I know you got Fordham ties and Patriot League ties, and and so you know firsthand how special.